Let's do chapter 11 of Jeremiah this morning. Starting in chapter 11, the word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Hear the words of this covenant and speak to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and say to them, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Cursed is the man who does not heed the words of this covenant. Anytime you don't listen to the Lord, you're cursing yourself. You're bringing problems upon yourself. Again, I'm not going through all the historical points of the book of Jeremiah. You could spend uh, hours and hours doing that. I want to go over the heart of the issue, the book of Jeremiah, the part that the church in America is absolutely missing. They're doing the very same thing that, that Judah and, and the Jews did. Uh, before the temple was destroyed the first time by Nebuchadnezzar. It can never happen. God wouldn't let anything like that happen. We'll just all go to church and stay the same way and everything will be hunky-dory. And that's not the way it is. Destruction is coming up on America. We're going into Islamic law, horrors and nightmare, Sharia law in America. The destruction of this country because of its wickedness and not only Sodom and Gomorrah, which is part of it, but the backstabbing of Israel since Jimmy Carter got in office. Now, let's go on. And, and say to them, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Cursed is the man who does not heed the words of this covenant, which I commanded your forefathers in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt from the iron furnace, saying, Listen to my voice. Listen to my voice. I hear people talking about... Uh, 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 what what God wants, uh, what God is doing, what we should do, and that I think, I, I wonder, I hope, I wish, but never saying, this is what I heard the Lord say, okay, because they're not hearing anything from the Lord, okay, let's go on, and, and do according to all which I command you, so you shall uh, be my people, and I will be your God, in order to confirm the oath which I swore to your forefathers, to give them a land flowing with milk and honey, as it is this day, uh, then I answered and said, Amen, O Lord. And the Lord said to me, Proclaim all these words in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, saying, Hear the words of this covenant and do them. For I solemnly warned your fathers in the day that I brought them from the land of Egypt, even to this day, warning pers persistently, saying, Listen to my voice. God has a voice. Does he who made the ears, can he not hear? Does he who made the eye, can he not see? Is he who made the mouth, can he not speak? God does speak. And he speaks words. He's not the God of confusion. He'll speak just what you'll need to hear to do the right thing. So you'll be blessed and not cursed. Now let's go on. Hear the, listen to my voice. Um, I'll read that again. Some, For I solemnly warned your fathers in the day that I brought them up from the land of Egypt. Even to this day, uh, uh, persistently saying, listen to my voice. Y yet they did not obey or incline their ear, nor walk each one. They walked in the stubbornness of, his e of their evil hearts. Therefore I brought on them all the words of this covenant, which I commanded them to do, but they, but, but they did not do what do it. It's, it's real simple. The Lord just says to his people, you don't have to make it religiously educated, PhD, uh, need the Greek or the Hebrew, uh, God uh, tells us what's required of us, uh, what he wants. God is the God of love. And if, if we listen to him, we'll be blessed. And if we don't listen, we're not going to be blessed. Uh, the, the main thing is, it, it is to honor the king, to fear God, and do what is right and pleasing uh, to the Lord. Uh, again, yet they did not obey or incline their ear. They didn't incline their ear, turn towards to hear it. Didn't even make an effort, but walked each one in the stubbornness of his evil heart. Therefore, I brought on them all the words of this covenant, which I commanded them to do, but they did not. Then the Lord said to me, a conspiracy has been found among the men of Judah and among the inhabitants of Jerusalem. I know you don't want to hear that word conspiracy. Oh, Lord, don't say conspiracy. All these conspiracies there, but God uses it. Listen to this. Listen to this. Then the Lord said to me, a conspiracy has been found among the men of Judah and among the inhabitants of Jerusalem. 
They have turned back to their iniquities of their ancestors who refused to hear my words, and they have gone after other gods to serve them. The house of Israel and the house of Judah have broken my covenant, which I made with their fathers. Therefore, thus says the Lord, Behold, I am bringing disaster on them, which they will not be able to escape, though they will cry to me, yet I will not listen to them. God says when you don't listen to him, eventually, sooner or later, you're going to get God, and you're not going to escape. Uh, what's coming up on you because the Lord, you're going to reap what you sow because you're rejecting what the Lord has spoken and shown you what is right and proper. Uh, God does not play. God is love. God is full of loving kindness and compassion, but God is righteous and just and he does not play. Here we go. They, ha they have turned back to the iniquities of their ancestors who refused to hear my words. Again, verse 10, and they have gone after gods to serve them. The house of Israel, like they worship baseball, basketball, football, hockey, clothing, houses, automobiles. They, they, they worship all this stuff rather than worship me who, who gave them all this is a blessing to bless them if they just listen to me. But now they got all this stuff. They don't have to listen to me. They do not. They're like an unfaithful bride, they're an unfaithful woman, you know, uh, forgot where she got her stuff at, the blessings that God gave her. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Verse 11. Therefore, thus says the Lord, Behold, I am bringing disaster on them, which they will not be able to escape, though they will cry to me, yet I will not listen to them too late. Count the tens over, y'all wouldn't listen. Then the cities of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem will go and cry to the gods to whom they burn incense, but they surely will not save them in the time of their disaster. God always allows that. God allows that the things that you're depending on, if they're not him, Sooner or later, you're going to run to that those things, and they're all going to reject you and turn turn their backs on you. God's going to allow it, and you'll set desolate because you rejected who could really help you, and you turn to false and vain uh, things. Now, let's go on now. Yet I will not listen to them. Verse 12. Then the cities of Judah and the heavens of Jerusalem will go and cry to the gods to whom they burn incense, but they surely will not save them in the time of disaster. The word disaster, disaster. For your gods are as many as your cities, O Judah, and as many as the streets of Jerusalem are the altars you have set up uh, to the shameful thing, altars uh, to burn incense to Baal. Baal, it, Baal just means uh, it means it means it means father. It it means worship, honor, bow down. Uh, the, the gods that you made for yourself. When it says uh, uh, the cities of Judah and the heavens of Jerusalem, it says for your gods are as many as your cities. There's a football team in every city. There's a football team, a baseball team in every city, hockey, basketball. It goes from one season to another that, that everything belongs to that. That's where all your money and, and all your attention, you know, all the facts and the figures about it and all that, but you do not know your God. You can tell batting averages. You know how many touchdowns and catches. You even know their families. It's just crazy, goofy stuff. But as far as the things of God, you know nothing of the things of God, but because those things have those things that, that have become your God are worthless. Uh, and there is another passage that said, "I will spread the dead bodies around the altars of the high places, where you go to worship, where your real worship is at. Uh, I, I'm going to allow a, a sacrifice to be done there to you. You're going to be the sacrifice. You're going to be sacrificed to those things that you worship." Uh, verse 14, therefore, do not pray for this people, nor lift up a cry of prayer or prayer for them, for I will not listen when they call to me because of their disaster. God's telling Jeremiah, don't pray for them anymore. There does come a time when the Lord says, no, 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 no. What right has my beloved in my house when she has done many vile deeds? Can the sacrificial flesh take away uh, from you your disaster so that you uh, can rejoice? In other words, uh, you go to church on Easter, you go on Christmas. But all the other uh, 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 days of the of the year, you want nothing to do with God. God means nothing to you. You're just sacrificed by getting on your Sunday suit and going to hunt Easter eggs and that kind of stuff. And uh, but you don't have a, a relationship with the Lord. You don't seek the Lord. You don't seek His face. You don't read His words. You don't pray. You don't witness to other people. You don't care about the souls of other people. Uh, it's kind of like. You know, you look at Robin Williams when he's died. I'm sorry. I hope he's okay. I hope he didn't go to hell. You look at uh, Prince that he died. You know, I'm sorry. I hope he didn't go to hell. But and everybody weeps and cries. Even people in the church is crazy and goofy. But as far as the 22 American soldiers that commit suicide every day in America, and most of you don't even know it, it don't mean a thing to you. It just does not mean a thing to you. Okay, verse 16. Because your heart is hard as a rock, a harlot's forehead. 
verse 16. The Lord called your name a, a green olive tree, beautiful and fruit in form, with the noise of a great turmoil. He has kindled fire on it, and its branches are worthless. It just says that, hey, God gave you everything. You were blessed. You had all this. But now, since he's God, just like the, uh, the, the potter and the clay, can the potter not take the clay and break it and do with it, redo it the way he wants to do it? It's his to do with. So you may have been all this good stuff, wonderful and beautiful, and had all these blessings, but now you're going to be cursed and burned behind turning away from it. And the Lord of hosts who planted you and pronounced evil against you because of the evil of the house of Israel and of the house of Judah, which they have done to provoke me by offering up sacrifices to Baal. God sent his only begotten son that whoever so believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God is love. He gave the most precious thing that he had. He gave the very most precious thing that he had. And when doing that, when doing that, we didn't have time for it. We offered up our sacrifices to everything else. Cars, trucks, boats, planes, sports, sex. Moreover, the Lord made it known to me, and I knew it, Jeremiah, that thou didst show me their deeds. But I was like a gentle lamb led to slaughter, and I did not know that they had devised plots against me, saying, Let us destroy the tree with its fruit, and let us cut him off from the land of the living, that his name be remembered no more. Jeremiah saying, Hey, I didn't know it, Lord, but you've showed me these people are going to hurt me because I've told them the truth, that they're going to get whipped because they turned away from you and they won't turn back. That's what's so very, very important before you plan on hurting somebody who's telling you the truth. You better make sure... First of all, if you got any sense, if it's the truth, you'll receive it. And even if you don't want to receive the truth anymore, you better make sure, you better some way find out if God didn't send them. Because if you think you're, you've are you got trouble now, you hurt and come against the one that God is sending to you to try to straighten you out, to get you in the right direction before destruction comes upon you. Something really bad will happen to you behind that. As a pastor for 32 years, I've seen it a dozen times. I heard about it through men like J. Harold Smith. Other testimonies of other preachers through the years, the bad things that happen to people who do this. But until you're in the ministry for a long time and you see this stuff happen over and over, that people, if you're come a time, you cross the line. And the church doesn't want to hear that. They don't want to hear the preaching on the fear of God. You need to fear him uh, uh, because he will use people as, as examples and bring judgment upon them. So others in the body will go, not me. I don't want to go that. I don't want that to happen to me now. Uh, what we want to do, we want to sin and act like it never happened. We don't want to repent of it. We just want to ignore. We're, li we're, we're lying against the truth. Okay, and then we want other people to believe our lies and try to force it down their throats. And if they won't believe it, then they become our enemies in the church, whether it's a prophet, a pastor, a teacher, a Sunday school teacher, the janitor, whatever it is. But God is still in charge and God is in control. But, O Lord of hosts, who judges righteously, who tries the feelings and the hearts. Let me see thy vengeance on them, for to thee have I committed my cause. Therefore thus says the Lord concerning the men of Anatta, who seek your life, saying, Do not prophesy in the name of the Lord, that you might not die in our at our hand. Therefore thus says the Lord of hosts, Behold, I am about to punish them. The young men will die by the sword. Their sons and daughters will die by famine. And a remnant will not be left to them, for I will bring disaster on the men of Ananoth, the, the year of their punishment. Now let's go to chapter 12. Chapter 12 of Jeremiah. Jeremiah's complaint to God. Jeremiah had to deal with these people around 25 years. And he put up with a lot. Uh, uh, they mocked him. They beat him. They threw him in a, in a, in a, in a dungeon, in a well, in a, in a, in a miry pit. Uh, uh, made his life hard. And he's complaining to God about it. Lord, how much longer do I have to put up with these people? Why did you choose me for this? You know, I've heard uh, many Jews say, okay, I don't want to be chosen anymore. Won't you choose somebody else? The stuff that it cost us to be who we are, okay? Uh, chapter 12, righteous art thou, O Lord, that I would plead my cause with thee. Indeed, I would discuss matters of justice with thee. Why has the way of the wicked prospered? Why are all those who deal in treachery at ease? Jeremiah seeing all these people that's doing bad that God is telling him to warn them. It just seems like they're prospering and they're doing okay. And he said, Lord, why, why is this so? Thou hast planted them. They are also taking root. They grow. They have been 
they produce fruit. Thou art near to their lips, but far from their mind. Jeremiah says, just like in the church today, uh, somebody may speak something from their mouth about God and may quote other people's sayings and do that kind of stuff and, and know a Sunday school verse, but they're far from the from their you're far from their minds because all week long they don't they don't know you, they don't speak of you, they're not concerned about others. It's football, it's baseball, it's basketball, it's clothing, it's cars, it's trucks, it's mountains, it's homes, it's all these things. But nobody's leading anybody to the Lord and everybody's resting on their laurels and everybody's retired and it's just worldly, 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 worldly. The flesh, the devil, and the world, my people are full of it. Now, and then he goes on and says, but thou knowest me, O Lord. Thou seest me, and thou examest my heart, attitude toward thee. Drag them off like sheep for the slaughter, and set them apart for a day of carnage. Uh, how long is the land to mourn, and the vegetation of the countryside to wither? For the wickedness of those who dwell in it, animals and birds have been snatched away, because men have said, He will not see our latter ending. Jeremiah says that everything in the nation mourns. Everything is dying, the birds and the animals running off, the crops won't grow, the rain won't come because of the wickedness of the people. That God, these things, we sing the song, showers of blessing, God sends blessing and blesses all these things. But when you start walking in evil, you cause these principalities and powers, these things that have to do with God, the blessing is shut off. You know, Lord, I, I'm your, I'm your, I'm your servant. Jeremiah says, I keep you on my mind. But golly, they treat me so bad, and all this stuff is happening, and they're prospering, getting all this stuff. Lord, please explain this to me, how you've got this like this. But the Lord does say it's the loving kindness of God that leads us to repentance. So when God finally does have to destroy someone or take someone out, it's not because God hadn't reached out with loving kindness; they just absolutely rejected it and did not want it. How long is the land to mourn? And it says, because men have said he will, he will not see our ladder in it. That that God doesn't uh, pay attention. God's not watching. It's not a big deal. The wrong that I'm doing in rejecting God in front of others and the children. If you have run with footmen, now God's talking to Jeremiah. If you have run with footmen, and they have tired you out, then how can you compete with horses? If you fall down in the land of peace, how will you do in the thicket of Jordan? Now God is telling Jeremiah, look. You know, the destruction hadn't come yet. You've been warning them, and they've been treating you bad and stuff. They don't want to hear it. Now, if you're going to faint behind this the way they're treating you, what's going to happen when the destruction comes? You're not going to be able to make it. We, we are told uh, as a good soldier to endure hardship uh, as a soldier. You know, that we we, we got to deal with it. We just got, got to accept it. We counted the cost when we received Jesus and realized they did it to him. They'll do it to us. If they hated him, if hate us, they hated him first. Uh had the count of the cost. So God reminds Jeremiah of this, you know, and it says, uh, verse 6, for even your brothers and the household of your father, even they have dealt treacherously with you. Even they have cried aloud after you. Do not believe them, although they may say nice things to you. Now, I know the things that I have seen. I'm not talking about what I heard from somebody. Things that I've seen that God has brought to pass from, from Katrina to uh, the Twin Towers to the, uh, 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 the explosion of Columbia to the Rabin assassination and dozens and dozens of, of other things. I've seen these things. I've had to tell them because God had a purpose in showing me these things to get people to listen that America was under judgment and the church needed to get its house in order because this destruction was coming against the United States of America. I mean, the, the closest people to me, uh, 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 family members, uh, don't want to hear it. They, they, they don't want to hear it. Because they're living, uh, they're not the way they need to be either. And people in the church, even the best ones that are your best friends, yeah, right on, right on, right on. But the whole time, you know, they don't believe it. They're living in their secret sins and they can't hear what the Lord is speaking. You know, Revelation says that those who have ears hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Okay, now, here we go. Let's go on. Uh, it says, do not believe them. When they cry after you aloud, do not believe them, although they may say nice things to you. He's telling Jeremiah, don't receive people flattering you, saying nice stuff to you because they're setting a trap for you. They don't believe it. He, say, he, he says then, I have forsaken my house. I have abandoned my inheritance. I have given the beloved of my soul into the hand of her enemies. It's set. The judgment is set. My inheritance has become to me like a lion in the forest. She has roared against me. That sin, God is saying, those that I died for, they are so carnal that when I send my people, when I send my word, 
to them, they roar against it. They bite the hand that feeds them. Judgment's going to come because they've gotten so far out of the way that I cannot do nothing but judge them for what they've done because I'm a righteous God. They will not listen to me. God always sends warning before judgment. My dearly beloved has roared at me. Now, some of you guys are married. And some of you, you know, we you say with women here about the thing about the one that's supposed to be your dearly beloved roaring at you like a lion, like an enemy. Like, wow, okay? And this is what God is saying about his people. Um, uh, my inheritance has become to me like a lion in the forest. She has roared against me. Therefore, I have come to hate her. And is my inheritance like a speckled bird of prey to me? Uh, are the birds of prey against her on every side? Go gather all the beasts of the field. Bring them to devour. Many shepherds have ruined my vineyard. They have trampled down my field. They have made my pleasant field a desolate wilderness. It has been made a desolation. Desolate, it mourns before me. The whole land has been made desolate. Because no man lays it to heart. On all the bare heights in the wilderness, destroyers have come. As America is being surrounded by Islam. And Sharia law is coming. And Christianity is being outlawed. And we're becoming an un, just filthy, ungodly nation. Nobody's paying attention. The people in the church at all know it are just blowing it off and making excuses. It's conspiracy because they've become politically correct because they have not resisted the flesh devil in the world. Now they're controlled by that. It says, on the bare heights in the wilderness, destroyers have come. It's like they're up on the mountains looking down in the valley, coordinating everything. Okay, let's go down and destroy them. And we, we just ignore it, ignore it, knowing that er, the danger that is there is about to hit. For a sword of the Lord is devouring from one end of the land even to the other. There is no place, no peace for anyone. They have sown wheat and have reaped thorns. They have strained uh, themselves to no profit. Be, but be ashamed of your harvest because, the fierce, because of the fierce anger of the Lord. Thus says the Lord. Uh, concerning all my wicked neighbors who strike at the inheritance with, with which I have endowed my people Israel. Behold, I am about to uproot them from the land and will uproot the house of Judah from among them. And it will come about after uh, that after I have uprooted them, I will again have compassion on them and I will bring them back each one to his inheritance and each one to his land. Then it will come about that if they will really learn the ways of my people to swear by my name as the Lord lives, even as they have taught my people to swear by Baal, then they will be built up in the midst of my people. But if they will not listen, then I will uproot that nation, uh, uproot and destroy it, declares the Lord. So he says, look, here's the compassion. If they'll listen, if they'll turn back uh, from their evil ways, if they'll acknowledge their sin, uh, I've, got, I've got compassion for them. Uh, I, 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 I love them, but they're going to have to make me Lord and, and quit bowing down to all this stuff they're bound down to and have a number one in their life from football to baseball to basketball to cars to trucks to boats to land to houses to sex to whatever 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 putting that first spending all their money there and I'm the back burner I'm a sacrifice to Easter and Thanksgiving and Christmas and uh, they just go through the motions being religious God says I will not allow myself to be done this way Jesus is Lord. 